Hello viewers, I welcome you all from HLD Tech channel and today we will talk about uh, two types of important permission levels or permission uh, standards that are followed in uh, Microsoft SharePoint product. The first one is inheritance based model and the second one is unique permission based model. If we talk about the inheritance, by the name of uh, inheritance it is clear that all the permissions that are uh, defined at the root level or the top level side are equally applicable till the lower or lowest level of child. For example, if you define a particular set of users to access any web application at the top side, then all the site collections or sub sites that are defined that are at the child level or the lowest level of the hierarchy, all the permissions will be equally applicable till that point. For example, this is a SharePoint web application and uh, in SharePoint web application, we have single site collection and in this site collection, we have different types of sub sites. Similarly, we have applications as well. For example, we may have a document library. We have a, uh, we may have a custom list. We may have some external list. We may have some announcements list, etc. Or we may have another application as well. Now, uh, a set of users that are uh, you want to make this set of users access this uh, complete hierarchy of web application, single site collection, applications, and sub sites. So, in uh, pros, if we talk about the pros of inheritance, uh, it is clear that they are easy for management, they have the same permission for everyone. And if uh, we talk about the cons, uh, you know that whenever we configure search, search is configured same for all and it cannot assign unique permissions because you have equal set of permissions for all of the users across the whole site. That is this user group. If you define that this user group has the edit permission at this uh, complete level form, then uh, this complete web application will have uh, been uh, allocated the same rights for this set of groups for that purpose you uh, if you talk about the cons we know that uh, you have to deal with this set of user group if it is defined in your active directory uh, in your microsoft main controller then uh, only the members of this user group can have access to that site for making any uh, other user to access the site you will only only grant the membership of this group in Active Directory and same set permissions for everyone for example if this user group has added permission at the sub site level it may have the added permissions at the application application 2 and single site collection and ultimately at SharePoint web application so the question is that where is the inheritance used the inheritance is used when you define some uh, in the scenarios where you define the public repositories for example, uh, Google has a search engine in which there are different site, uh, content sites at the back end and Google want that everyone can have the view access or the read access to that documents. You cannot change that documents. You can download that document. You can read that documents, but you cannot change them because the property or the ownership of those documents lies with the Google. Similarly, if you define any web application at your organization level in which you want that there may be some uh, particular site collections and there may be some uh, particular public uh, documents that have the public access to all the users of the company to read that document only. They can read the document, they can download the document, but they cannot edit the document or change the document while uh, it is the property of the organization. <laughs> For that purpose, you define the inheritance and in that inheritance, you define the read permissions for the user groups. If we talk about the cons, it means that the member of this user group can have access of everything. If you define this user group, the permissions of read or view only, then it means that all the documents or all the uh, related asset that is available in this web application of SharePoint uh, have can be accessed by this user group 
you cannot define unique permissions for example if you want that this user group may have access to only application one that is uh, if we say that this is the document library one and this is the document library two if you want that this user group have the access to your uh, document library one and there is an other doc uh, user group that have the access to document library two in that case if you are following the inheritance model you cannot achieve that objective for that purpose you have to assign the unique permission based model so let's talk about the unique permission based model <clears throat> okay and now unique permission model there is a sharepoint web application there is a single site collection you may have multiple site collections as well but i am keeping it simple to uh, for the understanding for making the understanding easier now you have one sub site in which you have uh, application one that is let's say you have one document library you have another document library similarly you have one more sub site in you in which you have the document library number three and four respectively now you want that there is a primary group in which you have the user group one and user group two you have two separate user groups okay i want that if before that point you can let's understand one thing that you have one user primary group you name it any uh, you name this group as a primary group or any other naming convention as per your organization standard for this primary group you make the user group one and user group two the members of this primary group okay it means that for accessing the web application now you want that these both of these groups or you have n number of groups that is multiple user groups for that purpose what you do you define that these uh, user groups have been, have uh, been given the membership of primary group and now you want that all of the groups that are the members of primary group may have access to the web application or in other words i can say that they can browse the website they, now I'm only talking about or I'm only restricted towards the browsing of the website you have the website of your organization and you want that all the user groups that are the members of primary group can have access to that website so it means that you will define it and you will define the this primary group the access permission that is the view permission at single site collection or the web application level now the uh, you have achieved the first target that is you have uh, 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 allowed these uh, groups who are the member of primary group the access of SharePoint web application. Now your users can browse the website of the SharePoint web application and now the next target is to re receive the uh, to go to the uh, respective uh, areas where they are authorized. For example user group 1 can access only the subsite one or the data in the subsite one application one application two it means that all of the areas that you can see here uh, on the left side it means that the user group one may be granted the access of these three repositories or the data of these three repositories similarly while making while uh, making them to access this uh, site tractions or the uh, repositories of this left side portion i also want that these user groups may not have access to these parts that are available on the right side so for that purpose i will break the inheritance at that point by default always remember by default the inheritance is enabled in the sharepoint model you have to manually uh, break the inheritance and apply the unique permissions now after accessing the website user group one have the separate identity because as a membership of primary group they have accessed this application and now as a separate identity i want to give them or grant them the access of read if i want to make this uh, user group to only read the available data in the application one application two and subsite one similarly if i want that this user group can also add data okay i want that this user group one can also add or read data in these repositories then i will give the permissions of contribute 
contribute means they can add edit delete or alter any document or repository in the content in the these containers actually these are uh, containers if we give them a, the concept of containers then it is quite easy that every container have a separate identity and i want that a separate user group have the separate permissions of that container okay so for that purpose i will define that user group one can access only the content that is available in subsite one app one and app two similarly i want that the user group two have access to uh, subsite number two app three and app four so in this way i am defining separate use user permissions to separate identities to separate assets or applications or the data inheritance is not enabled here i am defining the unique permissions so that for, for that purpose i am defining it so what are the unique permissions pros if we talk about the unique permissions pros unique permissions are for unique groups okay user group 1 and 2 are unique groups they have separate identity they have separate users who are the membership of user group 1 and they are separate members or users that have the membership of user group 2 now if i configure the search here that is a very important uh, feature of sharepoint that is the search feature if i implement the search engine here uh, what will happen that the search crawler will index all the data of this site and will grant access of search facility of this data to only the members of user group 1 similarly all the asset that is available all the documents or files that are available in app 3 app 4 and sub site may have the access of search by user group 2 only or we can say that user group 1 cannot search any data that is available in these sites similarly user group 2 cannot access the data that is available in sub site 1 app 1 and app 2 respectively okay in this way i have achieved the separate search and access at site level or the web application level for that purpose we have to define the unique permissions cons okay now the cons are relatively difficult to manage it means that if you have defined the unique permissions at uh, every container at every application at every feature of the sharepoint then it is relatively difficult to manage for example uh, your user group one have the membership uh, of uh, edit permission that sharepoint subsite one and read permission that application one and have full control over the application two then you may have to uh, manage these sites at different levels whereas in inheritance we saw that it can be managed at the top level only okay so this is the main uh, difference between the unique permissions and the inheritance based models it is very important in fact i can say that it is very very important for the SharePoint designers and the administrators who are designing or managing their websites and the content within it that they should decide that whether they are uh, they have to go for unique permissions or the inheritance based model because whenever your sites grew up these uh, challenges becomes quite uh, difficult to manage if you don't uh, kept if you don't uh, consider them at the initial level so uh, last of all let me tell you one important thing to uh, quickly decide to help you in deciding whether to go for an inheritance based model or a unique provision if you have a public repository public prayer just think about the google it doesn't uh, separate searches search is enabled for everyone if i am logging you are logging to the google search engine you can search that documents that i can search okay this is a public repository and a common lab repository but if you are uh, going to uh, restrict the repositories at the private level and you want to keep them the access different at different uh, repositories for different users then you must go for the unique permissions i hope it's clear and uh, I thank you all for watching this video and guys who are new uh, viewers I request you to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you may continue watching
more videos. I thank you all.